Okay, so now here are the last two balancing redox problems that we have on our notes. Notice that if it does not say anything about acidic or basic environment, then you always assume acidic. So example number three is an acidic environment. Example number four will be basic, which we have not talked about yet. Okay, so example number three. First thing I'm going to do is break it into its half reactions. So I've got H2C2O4 goes to, and I look at that and I see I've got carbon and carbon, so I'm going to go to carbon dioxide CO2. Um, it does tell us in the notes that we should go through and we should be able to identify the atoms that are oxidized and reduced, etc. Once you get it to the point where you've, you've determined your half reactions, then you can probably figure it out from there. I tend to uh, not do that up front, but we could have gone through and written those oxidation numbers all along the top, and that would help us identify how to break up our half reactions. So the next one, my next half reaction, is like this. And again, we need to be really careful about making sure that we write down the charges correctly. So now, once we have our half reactions, I'm going to look at my first half reaction and say that my carbons need to be balanced. So I'm going to balance my carbons by putting a 2 right there. Um, everything looks good, all except for the hydrogens and oxygens, which I'll come back to. I come down to the second half reaction, and I see my molybdenum looks okay, so everything's fine there. So now all I have to do in both of them is I have to balance my oxygens by adding water, and then I'll balance my hydrogens. So with my oxygen, I've got four on the left and four on the right, so everything looks good there. However, my hydrogens are off. I've got two hydrogens on the left, but none on the right, so I need to add two hydrogen ions to the right-hand side. So everything looks fine now for the first half reaction. The second half reaction, I need to balance by adding waters, and I've got four oxygens, so I will add four waters which now makes my oxygens balanced, but my hydrogens are not. I need to add eight hydrogen ions to the left-hand side. So now all of the atoms are balanced in the reaction. Now I just need to focus on my electrons, my charge. So my first half reaction, I see I've got a zero charge on the left side, whereas I've got a plus two on the right-hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and balance that by adding two electrons to my products. In my second half reaction, I've got a plus 8 and a minus 2. That gives me plus 6 on the left-hand side, whereas I've got a plus 3 on the right-hand side. So plus 6 and plus 3 gives me a total of three more positives on the left-hand side than on the right-hand side. So I'm going to balance that by adding three electrons. If you need to stop and think about it, you know, feel free to stop the video at this point and just kind of think about why we added three electrons. Whereas we had positive eight and minus two, that gave us a plus six on the left-hand side and a plus three on the right-hand side. So we had three more positives on the left-hand side. So that's why we added those three electrons. So now we know that we have to get our electrons to be balanced in both half reactions. So in my first half reaction, I'm going to multiply that times 3. In my second, I'm going to multiply that times 2. So when I go through that process, I get 3H2C2O4 goes to 6CO2 plus 6 hydrogen ions plus 6 electrons. My second half reaction, when I multiply everything by 2, I get 6 electrons plus 16 hydrogen ions plus 2 MOO4 minus 2s plus, yields 2 MO plus 3s plus 8 waters. Big reason I did that, one of the big main reasons was to get my electrons to cancel, but I see that there's some other things that cancel as well. I see my hydrogen ions will cancel. I've got six hydrogen ions in the first reaction right there, whereas I only have 16 in the second. So in the second one, I'm going to make that be 10 and just get rid of those hydrogen ions from the first half reaction. So now I think I've canceled out everything that can cancel, so all I have to do is just add it up, whatever's left over. And we get three H2C2O4s 
plus 10 hydrogen ions plus 2 MOO4 minus 2s yields 6 carbon dioxides plus 2 MO3, MO plus 3s plus 8 waters. There is our balanced, balanced redox reaction. So that was an acidic environment. We have not talked about a basic environment yet, but here are our rules for the basic one. And you can refer back to the front of your notes there. We're basically going to do all the same steps, but then after we've done everything that we would do for an acidic environment, we're going to add a little something else. So let me just go ahead and take it to the step where we would have it for acidic, where we're going to break it down. Zn goes to Zn plus 2, and NO3 minus goes to NH4 with a plus 1 charge. So in this case, we look and we see that our zincs and our nitrogens are all good, so that's fine. I just need to balance my oxygens by adding three waters. Now I've thrown off my hydrogen, so I need to balance my hydrogens by adding, it looks like I've got four here and six here, so I need to add ten hydrogen ions. So now everything is balanced except the charge, so I'm going to go ahead and balance my charge by putting two electrons for my zinc and for my, um, for my nitrogens. I see that I've got plus 10 and minus 1, so that gives me a plus 9, and I've got a plus 1 on the other side, so it looks like I've got 8 more on the left-hand side, so I need to add 8 electrons to my reactant side for the nitrogens. So in this case, I need to go ahead and multiply this top half reaction by 4 in order to get it to be 8. So that will go away, and we'll end up getting 4 zincs goes to 4 Zn plus 2s plus 8 electrons. So I did that so that my electrons would cancel. And now when I tally this up, let's see, nothing else cancels. So when I tally this up, I get 10 hydrogen ions plus NO3 minus 1 plus 4 Zn yields NH4 with a plus 1 plus 3 waters plus 4 Zn plus 2s. And then at this point, we have just done what would be required for an acidic environment. Just like we talked about earlier in a previous uh, little snippet, we talked about how there's hydrogen ions. That's what makes it acidic. Now what we want to do is we want to do this in a basic environment. So I'm going back up to my rules now, and it says to do all of those steps just as above. But after I've done that, after I've got to the point that I have it at right now, I am going to add the same number of hydroxide ions. And this should be, right here, that's a superscript. So that should be OH with a minus 1. I'm going to add those hydroxide ions that's equal to my hydrogen ions. So on each side, if I add it, I have to do it to each side. So in this equation, I notice that I've got 10 hydrogen ions. Therefore, I have to add 10 hydroxide ions. I can't just add it to one side. I've got to add it to both sides. Okay, so we see that we've added 10 hydroxide ions to both sides. However, just like step number three up here tells us, if you add hydroxide ions and hydrogen ions together, that makes water. So this is not really 10 hydrogen ions and 10 hydroxide ions. I just said that backwards, but it's not that. It's really 10 waters. So now, since that cancels out nicely and makes water, I can look on my other side and see that, yeah, we've got three waters over here. I'm going to make those go away. And this 10 becomes, you probably know it, a 7. So now all I have to do is just add up. Everything's canceled, so I just add up what I've got left. Don't forget about those hydroxides over there. So our final answer is 7 H2Os plus NO3 minus 1 plus 4 Zn yields NH4 with a plus 1 plus 4 Zn 
plus twos plus those ten hydroxide ions and that is it. that's all there is to it.